So in the problem of the day, in that very first step, we were talking about uh, relative priorities, meaning which resonance structure is more important than the other. There's actually a list of rules that I want you to remember if we're remembering which structures are more important than another. And I'll show you these in order of priority. So the most important resonance structures are going to be resonance structures that have full octets on every atom. All right, so let's take an example. All right, in this example, I'm going to draw CO, it's carbon monoxide, right? All right, so let's go ahead and try to draw this as a Lewis structure. All right, one way we could draw this is with a carbon-oxygen triple bond. Oxygen has a lone pair and carbon has a lone pair. What am I omitting? Positive charge goes on what atom? Oxygen. All right, does that mean carbon dioxide has a positive charge overall? Not quite. Carbon dioxide is a neutral molecule. Formal charge on carbon must be negative. So carbon monoxide has this positive and negative character on either side. What do we call this again? It's Witter ion. Okay, let's think about resonance structures. Oftentimes, I'll see students that say, all right, let's move electrons over to that oxygen. We know oxygen doesn't like having a positive charge. Maybe it'll yank those electrons out. Giving oxygen two lone pairs and carbon a lone pair right there. All right, if we go ahead and we use formal charge rules, what's the charge on carbon on the far right? be zero, right? What about oxygen? Z zero. So a lot of times students will look at this and they'll say, wouldn't this be the better way to draw carbon monoxide because it doesn't have any charges? What's the problem though with drawing it this way on the right? Carbon does not have a full octet. So let's make a note. That means that this is going to be the minor contributor. This one, on the other hand, must be our major contributor. Even though the oxygen has a positive charge, the oxygen has an octet, and the carbon has an octet. That means that it must be the more important contributor to the resonance structures. Does that make sense? All right, number two, meaning second priority after we've looked at octets. If tied, the structure with minimized charge takes priority. So let's assume we're comparing two structures where we have octets on every atom. The structure that doesn't have a charge is going to be more of a contributor than the one with the charge, right? We'll look at an example of this next. All right, number three is still a tiebreaker, but after step two, if still tied, Look at electronegativity. And then number four. Don't draw structures with C plus and C minus within it. Those are really, really, really minor structures. And so I'll show you an example of what I don't like to see. Let's say we've got this molecule. This is ethylene. It's 
the monomer for making polyethylene, the most common plastic on Earth. Some students will say, well, we've got a pi bond. Can't we move that pi bond to one of those carbons? If we did that, not only would the carbon on the left not have an octet, meaning it has a positive charge, but carbon not being in a very electronegative atom isn't very happy having a negative charge. So this is super, super minor. Meaning don't draw it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So number four is a general rule. Yeah, number four is a general rule, not a tiebreaker rule. All right. So I've got to practice one for us. And what I want us to do is to rank these. But first, we need to find the resonance structures. All right. And I'm going to draw every single bond just to make things clear. And you're welcome to draw out all of your hydrogens, too. All right, so we've got this anion. I want you to help me find the remaining two resonance structures for this anion. Remember, we can move pi bonds and lone pairs. Doesn't really matter which one we choose to start with. Let's take a vote. Who wants to see me move a pi bond? Who wants to see me move a lone pair? Uh, not a lot of people are raising their hands. I'll just do pi bond. <laughs> All right. So let's say I move this pi bond up here, right? Let's try it. See what it looks like. It's okay to make mistakes. If we do that, this oxygen has an extra lone pair. However, I'm forgetting some charges. Where do the charges go? Negative on oxygen, positive on the carbon. What I'm seeing right here, though, is exactly that situation we were talking about before. I would say this is very minor. Meaning we don't need to draw. Okay? Okay, but let's continue on, assuming that in the future we don't need to draw something that looks like that. Let's try to figure out what else we can move. We don't have any more pi bonds to move around. If I were to try to move this lone pair down, I'd just be going backwards, right? So that's not really helpful. What else could I do? The carbon lone pair, absolutely. So we could say, all right, this carbon's lone pair could dump down right there. meaning we have a carbon-carbon double bond now. And we've got an oxygen still with a negative charge. Outside of this, I don't really see any other Lewis structures that work very well. All right, so now the question is, yeah? So you're saying, what if we move this pi bond like that? What, OK, let's try the other one. I think you're saying, what if we move this pi bond right there? Yeah, so if we followed that green arrow, that carbon would have too many electrons, which isn't allowed. Good check, though. It's always better to draw it and cross it out and recognize you made a mistake than to just avoid mistakes altogether sometimes. All right. So now my question is, we've got three structures. We know that this must be third place. Meaning, we don't even want to draw this. It's so unimportant. All right, of the first one and the last one, which one do you think is more important and why? Check with your neighbor. Thank you. 
Yeah, so the very minor part is in reference to up here where we said number four, you don't even need to draw these because any structure where you have a positive carbon and a negative carbon, it's just not important. It just really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No, in fact, if you wanted to do this all in one step, you could just do that, right? And then you could skip over this intermediate in the middle altogether and go straight to the final one. Yep. All right. Who thinks the first one is more important? I like it. Why is the first one less important than the last one? Yeah, the oxygen is more electronegative. All right, so if we go through the... All of the rules. First thing I look for is octets. Do every single atom in here have an octet? Yes, absolutely. Does every atom here have an octet? No. So that's definitely bottom priority. Does everything here have an octet? Yes. So the first one we know we have octets. Then we go into the tiebreaker rules. Tiebreaker rules say look at electronegativity. Normally the atoms that are electronegative we know like negative charges. So in this case, oxygen being more electronegative is going to prefer that negative charge. So I would say that this is first place. And then this must be second place. Does that make sense? And then we can go ahead and we can draw the hybrid view of this. I'll go ahead and still draw out all of our bonds. We know that we've got partial double bond character here, partial double bond character here, two permanent lone pairs on that oxygen. We know that the oxygen has a partial negative, the carbon has a partial negative, but a lot less so than that oxygen, because we know it doesn't really want to carry that negative charge compared to the oxygen. So some people will even show it as a big delta minus symbol on top, and then a smaller delta minus on that carbon. So this might be a good hybrid view. Yeah, so that's a good question. The question was, does the carbon have a partial positive? Up here, we said we don't even need to draw this. So I would say I would ignore it because it's such a minor contributor, we wouldn't even look at it. Good question. All right, does that make sense? All right, what I have for everybody is a worksheet up front. Um, this worksheet is asking you to draw all of the possible resonance structures. I find that it works best if you work in a group of, I don't know, two or three. Some people prefer to work on it by themselves first and then check with the neighbor, however you want to do it. And then if you feel like you've mastered this and it's easy, you can flip it over and then I have an ultimate challenge for you that might require a scratch paper. People freak out with the challenge and they're like, is this going to be on the exam? No. Um, the front page is more similar to what you might see on exams and quizzes. Um, so make sure that you do feel comfortable with these before our next quiz and exam. What I'll do is I won't post the key today. I want everybody to really rack their brain over this. I'll post a video on the class website where I walk you through each of these. Um, and then I'll email it out on Canvas and it'll be on the class website. It may not be until Sunday because I'm at a conference. Um, but try to work through this and check with your neighbor until you get it right. All right, I also wanted to remind you, if you're in Thursday or Friday lab, we do not have lab this week because I'm at a conference. We'll start lab up again on Monday. Um, if you do have any questions, though, you can always email me. I'll have my laptop with me. If you want to do a virtual office hour via your computer, you can also shoot me an email, and I'll set aside a few hours on Sunday for virtual meetings with students, too. All right.